everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Sadly Your School Live. My name is Kimberly Woods, and I am thrilled to be bringing back Sarah Ressler Wright, aka Vocab Gal. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for being here with us today. And I am one of those people who loves to reflect on my past work and try to make my future work even better. So I'm really excited for today's topic and I think it's gonna be really useful for educators and it can also be useful for the parents and caregivers at home mm -hmm. where in this weird time, we are wrapping up our school year in this home setting. So if you're joining us live today, we want to let you know that we love to connect with all of you wonderful passionate educators and parents and caregivers out there. So if you're watching with us today, let us know in the comments, say hello so we can connect with you. And Sarah is going to take us through right now one of the articles she's written for us on the ELA blog on this topic. So Sarah, let's take it away. Thanks, Kimberly. I'm so excited today. I shared early. Uh, so here we are. Uh, and really, this is a hard time for us all in lots of different ways. And so we need some closure and we need some actual feedback on what's working and what's not working. And obviously we have spent a year with our students, uh, some virtually and some obviously most of it in person. And so I always like to survey my students at the end of the year. Uh, and then I also like to survey my colleagues at the end of the year. So it's not just about the students, but I need to make sure that from year to year that I am effectively educating them. And I do like to hear from them. And I think this year is especially important to hear from students because we need to know uh, how to teach virtually and what they liked and what they didn't like, because that could be our reality uh, for a while. Yep. So this student feedback questionnaire that I have, I really appreciate. And and this is also important because uh, I noted here at the beginning of my post that I had a student unexpectedly walk into my classroom at the end of one year. And she said, I always appreciated that you gave me the work to do, even though I was failing your class all year long. And I had never known that from her. She never said anything to me at all about the fact that I expected her to do work up until the very end, even though she wasn't gonna pass. I wanted her to learn, I wanted her to participate. And so that's really hard to know right now because she's not gonna walk into my classroom because I can't walk into my classroom. And so I really wanna know from students. And I had another student that I am, um, I work with on different groups and she was not getting her work done. And I had other teachers who reached out to me. And so what is working and not working when a student isn't getting work done? Um, and so something that, you know, I can reach out to the student and other student and other teachers can't. What could they have done differently? This is just incredibly important right now. And it's also, we don't want to make it painful and terrible and something for teachers to have to do a lot of work because we're already overworked and stressed as it is. Yeah. And Sarah, um, I just want to stop you really quick. Yeah. I know that in this article, we are linking to a questionnaire that you give to your students at the end of the school year. And for teachers who want to take this totally digital, you can download this questionnaire uh, PDF that we have and actually build it out in a tool like Google Forms that is free and collect all of this information, you know, all digitally if you are not in the classroom setting right now where you can print and pass it out. Absolutely. And what I like about Google Forms so much is that you get some pie grids so that when you ask simple yes or no questions, um, did you appreciate the readings that we did? And so you can see if 50% did and 50% did not, or if you have a 70, 40, 30 split, uh, you can really see in a pie chart, which is sometimes hard to read and survey after survey, it feels like there's a lot of no's. But then when you look at the overall pie charts and graphs that Google Forms will give you, you get a much clearer picture of overall. Uh, and of course, we always have to keep in mind that these surveys are going to be filled out by certain students and not all the students. So there's some bias just in who's filling out the, the survey, but it can be really helpful, this sort of survey feedback. Yeah. Uh, I always want to remind people that it, it can be very hurtful uh, to get some feedback from students who are frustrated by other 
aspects of their lives right now. So please take uh, the feedback with a grain of salt. Yes. Uh, and then the idea of being specific about the questions and asking some why follow-ups also is helpful so that you have a sense of what to do. Because I love to tell students, I want you to come to me with issues, but also try and come to me with a potential solution. Yep. You know, and as you were, as you're talking through this, another thing came to mind that might be really useful for educators is to hop on a video chat, like randomly select yeah. some students, you know, maybe you're more vocal students and maybe some of the more quiet ones and randomly select people and just get on a video chat for 10 minutes and just have that open dialogue where you're yeah. asking questions. And that would be really useful as well. I know I was talking to one of my uh, Gale representatives last week for our databases and our conversation was so much richer when we were able to go back and forth. And I said, I have this idea. And she said, oh, I really want to take that and run. Whereas yeah. if I just emailed her, she could have said, yeah, that's nice, but we couldn't have that follow up. So that's a great idea. Yeah. So if you want to, you know, skip the survey and just conduct some video interviews, that's another yeah. smart way to do it. Absolutely. And so here is the questionnaire that you can download. This again is uh, pretty generic because it's for everyone. So please uh, use these ideas as inspiration and then you can take them and tailor those to your classroom. Yep. I do really appreciate it, and Google Form will allow you to make the survey um, anonymous. And I think yep. students are more likely to be honest when they know that there's some anonymity, especially as grades are being uh, finalized and due right now. Uh, it is a source of anxiety to know that if you give negative feedback, then that could negatively affect your grade. Yep. Uh, then I really stressing the importance of respect. Everybody's struggling right now. We know that everyone's struggling. Uh, we expect you to remain respectful. Uh, and then understand why students are doing the survey. I think so often they think, oh, another survey. I'm asked to do these surveys all the time. Uh, and so really the idea that, hey, I want to better serve you and your fellow students. And I'm going to use this survey. Potentially, you, you give out one survey per grade level or per subject, uh, or even uh, kind of play around with it so they're not taking seven surveys, potentially, but uh, only a couple, uh, and then targeting specific students as well. Yep. So my second area that I really want to stress, and I, I don't think we do it enough, is asking for feedback from your mentors and or administrators. And clearly, uh, most teachers have evaluations from their administrators as part of their teaching process, which is it can be often stressful. Uh, I know that in the past, some of my administrators have not provided me with really helpful feedback. I always want constructive feedback. I don't just want you to tell me I'm doing a great job. Uh, and so asking for feedback gets tricky, but potentially other colleagues and mentors can look and you can review with them what you've done. You can ask some questions and just having that time to collaborate. What did you do that worked? Uh, what did I do that worked? And just ha again, having a, a conversation, a Zoom meeting uh, and reflecting together is, is a nice way to say, hey, what do you think about this idea? Yep. And so, and again, I have some ideas of specific questions to ask of yourself, really. Um, are you calling on all the students? Obviously that's gonna look a little different right now. Um, but what about effective questioning strategies? How did you do that well? Uh, how did you communicate content well? And this is also really helpful uh, to go to your colleagues right now and look at their, if you're working in Google Classroom or Canvas or another uh, learning management system, then you kind of look at how other people are setting up their pages and their expectations. That can be really helpful. It's visiting that virtual classroom of a colleague if you can't technically walk in their doors. And really that, that helps spark everybody's imagination and what they can do better. I love it. So I have lots of kind of reflective questions. questions here. Yeah, I would just even pull out some of those top ones that work best for you and hop on a Zoom call again with your colleague um, or your leader and, and have that open dialogue over a video because it's gonna be more rich. And I know that for a lot of my English colleagues in my school, we, we are really trying hard to be kind to ourselves right now because it's very stressful, it's very overwhelming. However, we also know that we want, if we have to continue to be virtual or if we don't, how are we gonna walk into next school year better? And so taking some time to reflect now and in the upcoming weeks where we can all sort of take a deep breath 
hopefully, and um, relax for a minute uh, and kind of think, okay, what can I do differently? And I have kind of a, a checklist going on one side if we're back in school officially, if we're not back in school, if we're back in school virtually, uh, what, what can I do better? And I need to make some better relationships early on and I need to target some of the students who are struggling and help them find a place in the library. And I have lots of uh, what I already want to do. And I feel like we all kind of in the back of our minds have these ideas, but taking some time to write it down can also really uh, be, be meaningful. And so I've also been writing uh, some reflection down for a class that I'm taking. And I think solidifying that just not in sort of in my mind, but no, I committed to it on paper. Yeah, I agree. And I'm a huge believer that it's harder to develop your plan moving forward if we don't go back and analyze the data. What worked? What didn't work? Um, what maybe required a lot more time than I thought or was easier than I thought? And if you can go back and analyze this data, you're going to have a more solid plan in the fall. So I love this topic. And I agree with you that when I can write things down, it feels more tangible and it feels like it's like it's a bigger, like there's more weight to that goal, Absolutely. right? Maybe that's the term I'm looking you committed, for. You committed to it. Exactly. So I love this. Thank you, Sarah. I've linked to this article in the chat here on Facebook and also in Zoom. So if you're interested in checking it out, so that you can collect some great feedback here as the school year ends. Go ahead and access that link in the comments. And I will be back on tomorrow at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 12 o'clock Pacific with Dr. Matthew Bayronavond. We're going to shift focuses tomorrow and talk math. And we would love to have you back. And Sarah is going to be back on later this week on Thursday with a special guest. And we would love to have you all back there as well. Thank you so much, Sarah. We appreciate you coming on here and spending this time with us and helping us all better our educational practices. Thanks, Kimberly, for having me. And I'll see you later this week. Okay, bye. Bye.